Welcome back to Stay Tuned. I'm Tony Angelo. This is my YouTube channel and uh, we've got a really awesome project here today. Uh, if you are new to this channel, I've been out west hosting Hot Rod TV with Motor Trend for a long time and I've just decided to strike out on my own. I posted this on social media. It was too much traveling back and forth. And to be honest, the reception I got was huge. It was just so much support. Uh, I'm really thankful to everybody that's been following me, all the new subscribers that have come to the channel. Thank you so much. I think we're gonna have a blast here. So here we go. The first product I get to talk about is this 1974 Street Freak Street Machine Firebird. This thing obviously is bananas. It's got more flake than a Kellogg's factory. It's sick. Stripes, blowers. I mean, it's wild. This thing is so cool. And I'll tell you the story about the car, how it came to me. It was like 2019, I'm in LA shooting, it's a long day, I'm at the hotel having a couple of adult beverages, and uh, I've been looking for a second gen for a long time. I love second gens. I used to be like, they're the worst F-body. Now I think they're the best F-body, especially the early cars with the small rear window. Uh, they're so cool. And I was looking, and I'm like, let me just get on Facebook Marketplace before I pass out. And this thing pops up for a cool $1,000 and it only been up for about an hour. So it's nine o'clock West Coast, midnight on the East Coast. And I just reached out to the guy and I just said like, hey, take my money, please. Please, how can I pay you? That was it. There was no like, oh, miles or what's it like? I said, is there any crazy rust? He said, no. I said, great, I'll take it. I sent the dude money and the idea was uh, ship this thing to LA build it on Hot Rod Garage, and sort of put it on the channel. Um, but that never happened because I just could not nail down a reputable Pontiac engine builder, at least not on the West Coast. I've heard since there's tons of great people on the East Coast. I think we're gonna try our hand at just building something ourselves. but that is the story. And I came to find out later um, because I did eventually track down the guy who painted this thing in his backyard in 1983. He had sold it the original ish owner uh, who'd had it since 77, uh, sold it about a week before I bought it for $500. Now, it blows my mind that I got it for a thousand, but the fact that he sold it for 500 is even more insane. But there's so much more cool backstory to this car, and we're gonna dig in right now. Oh, and one thing I wanna say shout out to uh, Grease Monkey Gloves. Uh, for being just our first and just such a big supporter of Stay Tuned. And myself, these are super bitchin' gloves. Uh, I use them, they make obviously a million different kinds. These are for uh, busting ghosts, I think, or delivering calves. Um, no, but really they're for using like harsh chemicals and stuff, they're sick. They obviously have regular mechanic gloves and stuff. You can get them at Home Depot, you can get them at AutoZone, they are killer. So go out, get some Grease Monkey gloves, do it. So, here is the deal. Um, I talked to a guy named Gene, who essentially owned this car from 1977 until now. I got, I just got the lowdown from him. Um, he seemed super cool, Maryland dude, rock and roller, cool guy. He's wearing a, a Skinnerd hat and a Steppenwolf shirt in one of his Facebook pictures. He got long bitchin' hair. He's uh, awesome. And we talked on the phone. He reached out, he was like, hey, I think you have my old car. And I said, I certainly do. Um, and the coolest part of all of it, what blew my mind is that, you'll see the shape the car's in now. It's cool, it's got a lot of potential, it's a little ragged. Uh, but he sent me a picture of this thing in all its original glory, and it is sick. I mean, it's wild. That thing is bananas. In its heyday, it was the absolute coolest. All right, so here is the deal with this car and i'm going to give it to you all at once so this guy named jean has got a girlfriend it's 1977 her parents buy her a 354 speed 1974 pontiac esprit it was originally probably blue or white uh, it certainly didn't look like this bad boy but the deal is she bought it, she drove it during high school, senior year. It was probably super bitchin' and fun, you know. There was probably Kiss playing on the A-Track, and it was cool. So, in 19... Let me get all these, these dates right. Um, her boyfriend is this dude, Gene. 
And he's like, let's start making this car, bitch. And it's really, it's cool. It's got potential. So in 81, my man takes it and he does a black paint job with blue sparkle flames on it. You know, tons of, tons of flake and candy on the flames only. Must look awesome. I don't think he has any pictures of it. It would have been sick. And he tells me it kind of became more of a serious, like, you know, fun show weekend car at that point. Nobody's daily driving it. It's cool. 354 speed. He put a, a little bit of time into it. But in 1983, it was time to get serious. So this dude, who is not a painter by trade, he's a truck driver, long time truck, truck driver, um, but grew up in Maryland uh, watching some gnarly local painters paint and he learned to paint by just observing and hanging out at the shop which must have been the absolute coolest in the late 70s so here's the deal uh this car is painted first in 79 so they only had it like a year and a half and so he painted it black with the blue flames which was probably sick so he told me again the guy's a long time truck driver he's not a painter by trade but this thing looks absolutely bananas uh he went to tom downey's shop custom painter in in baltimore in the maryland area just all the time to hang out as a kid in in high school and apparently picked up the ability to do this on the side so 1981 he's like i'm gonna make this thing kind of mine we're gonna make it fast we're gonna make it serious uh he put a big 10 bolt out of a camaro on the back of it remember it's still a four-speed car um and then he goes to ho specialties which was like um uh, a Pontiac performance shop that's long, no longer here. He got some Ram Air 3 heads that were ported. He got a big cam, and he got a 671 blower, and he put it on this thing. And after that, it was just an absolute animal, the dude says. Uh, crazy stock. He ran it with a stock bottom man. He said it would absolutely just roast tires in every gear. Uh, 370 gear in the back said it was, you know, it's a Pontiac motor, so it hates to rev. Uh, torquey, beastly, shifted it to five grand. It was just an absolute monster. Um, so that's cool. You can see one thing that is sort of dictating this build is this big old party hole in the hood. So there's just about no way I can live with myself without putting a blower motor in this car. It's just the way it's got to be. Um, he went even further with the car in 1983 that's when he said he took three weeks off of work and did this gnarly paint job um as you can see it's uh, acrylic lacquer he told me it's got a ton of the flake in it it's all he told me silver flake with the uh candy paint over it he said he worked essentially every he took three weeks off of work and just did it day in and day out and it's this the raddest part of this car a street machine street freak vibe if you don't know it's just something that's like wild over the top in every way the paint the interior the motor the stance it's just like a you know look at me look at this wildness car that is was super popular late 70s early 80s and i just dig this thing so hard he had the interior done. This is a proper velour interior, which is actually feels pretty good. Um, I'm going to see if I can get some of these stains off. If you guys know how to get any of this stuff cleaned up, that'd be great. I wouldn't uh, shine a black light in here because I bet it would light up like the 4th of July. But listen, look at that. You got a velour headliner? Because uh, this thing does. Super cool blue flake on the dash. Added a couple of gauges. It's got a proper eight track in it. At some point, I'm gonna have to solicit, pick up my hands on some eight, some eight track tapes. Um, yeah, that's gotta be the way it goes. But this is just like I can just imagine. Here, let's let's do this thing. Yeah, seat's good. All right. Yeah, just imagine this thing ripping gears. You got a white t-shirt on, cigarette pack in your sleeve, right? Something, what's playing in here? Probably some some Kiss, or some Aerosmith, some other garbage 70s arena rock that I still like, even though it's not really good. Maybe Zeppelin, right? It would be awesome. Maybe Seeger, you know? A little Seeger, a little Bad Company, I could feel that. 
This thing is so cool. I'm so bummed it's been sitting doing nothing. Um, but here is the dilemma. So that's the story of the car. Um, my man blew the motor up in 89.90. He had, the girlfriend was long gone. He bought the car from her. Uh, he got married. He had a couple kids. And if you don't know this, kids take up a lot of your time. Um, and it just sat. It sat for 30 years. He sold it in 2019 for 500 bucks to some dude who flipped it to me for a grand. I've got it, and here's how we all got connected. Um, my dude Gene said he got a call from his brother one day, excited, and he was like, I think your car is on a TV show in the background on a lift. Uh, and so he went on my Instagram and Facebook and said, I painted that car in my backyard in 1983, get a hold of me. And that's what I did, and he, he had posted that picture, the absolute coolest. So we talked, and, and this is the thing. I want to get this car running. I don't know if you know this. Pontiac motors are expensive. Chevy motors are not. Um, but we're here. Let's pop this hood. All right, so this is the question, right? I want to get this thing on the road. What do I stick in this engine bay? You can see it's got a bunch of old, old school stuff. That's an MSD that's proper straight from... the 70s or like maybe 81 I think. I talked to somebody at MSD about it in one of the dinners at SEMA. He told me it is absolutely legit. Old school as hell. It's got Pontiac headers as you can see. An old Excel super coil. Um, I just feel like uh, I've got to put the Pontiac motor in it. Here's the deal. Um, I could throw a 454 together. It wouldn't take very long. Uh, it would probably go in pretty easy. I've already bought uh, an M22 for it, the old uh, Muncie rock crusher. Uh, it's in nice shape. It's sitting in the trunk. Um, but I think it's got to be a Pontiac motor. And what I learned is that it was only a 350 before, right? So I think I'm just going to build a 400 and uh, get that blower on it. It's got to fill that hole in the hood. And what's crazy is I was on the phone with Gene yesterday. And I just said, listen, man, like, you got any of the parts from the car? And he told me. He has the whole blower set up sitting in his garage. Doesn't know if he wants to sell it yet, but I was like, if you do, I think it'd be really cool to get back where it belongs under the hood of this thing. Well, through the hood of this thing. And uh, we'll see what happens. But as of right now, step one is going to be putting parts together for a Pontiac motor, getting that thing up and running and in this car. So that's what I'll be working on pretty quickly. Got a bunch of other stuff going on too, like 9 million other cars, but I think maybe we get this Pontiac going for sure. Cool. All right, well, that's it. All right now, I'm going to show you a bunch more of the stuff, but uh, that's it for this episode of Stay Tuned. Let me know if you think I should put a Pontiac motor in there or a Chevy motor. Uh, let me know if you have a bunch of 8-tracks laying around. You want to send me some some Skinner or, you know, something bitching. Maybe some, some Rat. That'd be tight. Uh, I'm down. Oh, yeah, you can send it. Send it to P.O. Box 68, Spring City, PA, 19475. And I will put it in this car and rock out. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, we will see what this $500 barn find uh, turns into. It's already the, it's already the coolest looking car I maybe I've ever seen. It's one of my favorites. So it's cool. And I want to, if you got a Trans Am wing for the back, I might have to go on there because I always love those. But this thing is cool. I don't want to change too much. I mean, like, look, it's just so cool. It was just so radical back in the day. All I want to do, I'm going to clean up these rocket wheels. I'm going to put a poncho motor back under the hood, run at four speed, throw my hair long maybe, get a mullet, and uh, cruise this thing. So it's very cool. Oh, if you know if it's safe to drive on old bias ply tires, let me know. All right, cool. I will see you guys in the comments. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you soon. Oh, yeah, one last thing. Uh, anybody in, like, the southeastern PA area that wants to put some clear over this acrylic lacquer, uh, let me know, because I think I don't want this paint to get too wrecked. The top of the, the roof, you can see it's got some texture to it. I think it needs, it needs some, some more clear laid back down on it.